You're listening to the Observing Eye. Pirate Radio for the Mind. Coming at you fresh from the computer hell cabin. Hello, you beautiful lot. It's Friday, the 3rd of May, 2024, and you're listening to episode 63 of The Observing Eye, coming at you live from the computer hell cabin. Yes, we are back this week, back amongst the tangle of wires and screens. Every week, we get psychological, philosophical, and all manner of introspective. I'm David. And this week, we're exploring the life and legacy of a man who acted as a bridge between the East and the West, bringing the depths of Eastern philosophy to the Western world. I'm talking, of course, about none other than Alan Watts, a man renowned for his eloquent and down-to-earth delivery of ideas about life, the universe, and everything. Born in 1915 in the suburbs of London, Watts developed an early interest in the mysteries of our existence a curiosity that would lead him across continents and into the hearts of many philosophical traditions. His journey was not just geographical, but also spiritual and intellectual, weaving through the teachings of Zen Buddhism, Taoism, and Hindu philosophy. In today's episode, we'll embark on a three-part journey through Alan Watts' life. From his early days as a young thinker in England to his later years as a philosophical entertainer in the hills of California, We'll delve into his core beliefs, examining how he blended complex ideas with eloquence and wit, making them accessible and relatable to all. And finally, we'll reflect on why Alan Watts' teachings remain intensely relevant to us still, from understanding the essence of self to embracing the beauty of the present moment. Watts offered insights that promise to enlighten and inspire. Whether you're a long-time admirer of Watts or you're just discovering his work, this episode promises to offer a deeper understanding of his philosophical journey and its enduring impact. So sit back, relax, smoke a pipe, and let's get ready to unlock the wisdom of Alan Watts. Alan Wilson Watts, a name synonymous with both Eastern and Western philosophical traditions, was born on January 6, 1915, in Chislehurst, England. His early years were marked by a quaint suburban English life, but even as a young boy, Watts displayed an unusual fascination with nature and the mystical. This early curiosity was to kindle for a blazing path of philosophical exploration. At the young age of 16, Alan's journey took a decisive turn. He stumbled upon the book, The Meaning of Happiness by Dr. Suzuki, who introduced him to Zen Buddhism and set the stage for his lifelong passion. But Watts was not just a passive reader, he was an active seeker. By the age of 20, he had become the secretary of the London Buddhist Lodge, where he had the fortune to engage with influential figures in the Buddhist community. His academic pursuit led him to King's School, Canterbury, and later to the University of London. However, it was not traditional academia that captured his spirit, but the rich, uncharted waters of Eastern philosophy. In 1938, seeking broader horizons, Watts moved to the United States, where he enrolled at the Seabury Western Theological Seminary and became an Episcopal priest. Yet his calling was far beyond the church's confines. In the early 1950s, Alan Watts left the ministry, feeling that it constrained his expansive views. He ventured westward to California, a place that would become his spiritual and physical home for the remainder of his life. There, he joined the faculty of the American Academy of Asian Studies in San Francisco, 
This position allowed him to dive deeper into the philosophical traditions he loved and to start shaping the views that would make him a household name. But Alan Watts was not just a scholar hidden in academic halls. He became a counterculture icon, speaking directly to the youth of the 1960s and 70s, those who were disillusioned by the materialism and strict societal norms of the time. Through his weekly radio program and public lectures, Watts discussed topics from cybernetics to psychedelics, always bringing them back to his core message of understanding the self and the universe. His philosophical entertainment attracted a following that was rare for a thinker of his kind. Watts wrote extensively, publishing more than 25 books and numerous articles, elucidating complex philosophical concepts with his characteristic wit and simplicity. Titles like The Way of Zen, The Wisdom of Insecurity, and The Book on the Taboo Against Knowing Who You Are are considered essential readings even to this day. And as an aside, I would highly recommend if you are remotely interested in understanding Eastern philosophy and don't want to pick up a tome like the Pali Canon, grab yourself those books, The Way of Zen, The Wisdom of Insecurity, and The Book on the Taboo Against Knowing Who You Are, which is personally my favorite. I'm going to put links to these in the show notes, so you'll be able to find them and purchase them from your local bookseller when you, or if you feel so inclined. What's his personal life, however, was as complex and tumultuous as the philosophies he studied. He married three times and struggled with alcoholism, challenges that he never shied away from discussing in his lectures. His openness about his personal struggles made his philosophical teachings all the more human and relatable. As we think about his life, it's important to note that Alan Watts was a man that lived his philosophy much like Diogenes in our previous episode, living in his big ceramic jar. But Watts lived inside a boat, not a jar. Um, so much more much more um, socially acceptable, more conventional. And if you have no idea what I'm talking about, about this old dude that lived in a jar, you can go back and listen to that episode. It was, it was the episode 62, the last one that we did. And uh, we'll talk all about Diogenes, the man who lived possibly the most authentic life of any philosopher I've ever come across. Very interesting person. But I digress. We are talking about Alan Watts this week. Watts advocated for a deep engagement with the present moment and a joyful participation in the sorrows of the world. His speeches often ended with a call to perceive life as a glorious expression of energy, a viewpoint that endeared him to many. Alan Watts passed away quietly in his sleep on November 16th, 1973, aboard his houseboat in Sausalito, California. Though he is no longer with us, his voice continues to echo through the countless recordings and books he left behind, each piece a thread of his expansive, inclusive view of spirituality. And again, I will put some links to some of his his talks and and, uh, lectures in the show notes so you can go and have a look at those as well. They They are definitely worth a look if you are into this kind of thing. So as we move forward in today's episode, let's carry that image of Alan Watts, not as a philosopher, but as a man who danced the rhythm of life's uncertainties with grace and insight. A man who, through his profound understanding and love of life, became a beacon for those searching for meaning in a tumultuous world. And now, a word from our sponsor. Now, if you've been here before, you'll know that there is no sponsor. Surprise, it's just me. And I want to iterate that there will never be a sponsor. I feel that allowing an external influence to potentially impact the content of these episodes, what or how I'm permitted to deliver it, and the sort of subjects that I can cover would fly in the face of the authenticity that I strive for in each episode. So if you do like what you hear, and if you want to support this podcast, don't worry, I'm not holding my hat out. I don't want money or anything. You can go and give it a like or a follow on the platform that you listen to it on. And if you feel very motivated, you can drop us a review. It helps to get us in front of a bigger audience, and it helps me to understand what content you all want to hear. Many thanks, and much love. Having explored the contours of Alan Watts' life, let's turn to the core of his work, his philosophy. Watts was a man who bridged worlds not only geographically, but intellectually, bringing together the traditions of the East with the analytical rigour of the West. 
At the heart of his philosophy was the exploration of consciousness and the nature of reality. He delved into the principles of Zen Buddhism, Hinduism, and Taoism, translating these often esoteric doctrines into ideas that resonated with the Western psyche. So let's start with Zen, a cornerstone of what's his thought. Zen Buddhism, which emphasizes direct experience and personal enlightenment through meditation and mindfulness, had a huge impact on Watts. He often discussed the Zen concept of satori, or sudden enlightenment, moments of profound insight where one sees nature and existence as they truly are, without the filter of language or categorization. For Watts, this was not just a philosophical or religious exercise, but a practical approach to living. He believed that in the pursuit of knowing ourselves, we often overlook the most obvious truth, the undeniable reality of the present moment. Watts urged his listeners to see life as a continuous flow, a series of interconnected events where the goal is not to secure a future happiness, but to experience the now fully. Alan Watts found another vein of rich wisdom in Taoism, particularly in the idea of Wu Wei, which he interpreted as effortless action or going with the flow. This Taoist principle suggests that the best way to handle situations is to align ourselves with the natural course of events, to act in harmony with the universe rather than fighting against it. Watts often illustrated this with the analogy of a boat moving with the river's current. The skillful sailor navigates by adjusting to the river's flow, not by imposing his will against it. Watts saw this approach as key to living a fulfilling life. When we align our actions with the cosmos, we tap into a natural, effortless power. He also drew heavily from Hindu philosophy, particularly the Vedanta tradition, which speaks to the non-dual nature of reality. In Vedanta, Brahman, the ultimate reality, is the same as Atman, the essence of the individual. Watts communicated this idea through the simple but profound assertion that we are not merely in the universe, we are of it. We are not observers of this spectacle of existence, we are integral parts of it. This led him to challenge the very foundation of how we perceive ourselves and the world around us. In his famous book, The Book on the Taboo Against Knowing Who You Are, Watts argues against the societal and cultural constructs that alienate us from our true nature. He suggested that the strict separation between the self and the universe is a misleading, harmful illusion. But of course, Watts was not just a philosopher. He was a spiritual entertainer who used humor, paradox, and contradiction to jolt people out of their conventional thinking patterns. He believed that exposing the absurdities of certain social norms and philosophical assumptions could liberate us from them, allowing us to embrace a more harmonious existence. His teachings challenged the rigid dogmas of organized religions and philosophical systems, advocating instead a mystical understanding of life that embraces uncertainty, impermanence, and the intrinsic ambiguity of existence. In doing so, what's provided a spiritual toolkit for navigating the modern world with grace and equanimity. Perhaps one of the most enduring aspects of Alan Watts's philosophy is his assertion that life is fundamentally a magnificent cosmic dance. He encouraged us to participate in this dance with the full awareness that we are not separate from it, that we and everything around us are expressions of the same singular cosmic energy. In his lectures, Watts often invited his audience to see themselves as waves in a vast ocean. Each wave might appear distinct and separate, but in reality it is not separate at all. It is simply the ocean expressing itself as a wave. In the same way, each of us is an expression of the universe experiencing itself. As we conclude this part of the episode, our exploration of his core beliefs, we are reminded of his ideas to awaken to the profound simplicity and interconnectedness of all life. By understanding his philosophies, we can perhaps begin to view our lives not as isolated struggles, but as integral parts of a grand divine play. So if you've been here before, you'll know that I try to bring out some of the ideas and the philosophy that I'm talking about in each episode to something that's practical that you can use, especially some of these older philosophies. You know, you might be thinking, 
what's something that existed a thousand years ago, 2000, 3000 years ago got to do and how is it applicable with, with our lives today? Obviously it's slightly easier with Alan Watts because it was within the last hundred years, but let's go through some of his ideas and talk about how they are relevant today and what impact they've got on, on our society and culture as a whole. I'm going to start with the concept of mindfulness, which is a principle that is at the core of what's his philosophy. The mindfulness is one of those words that gets bandied around quite a lot. And that predominantly is a result of a lot of the work that Watts did back in the 50s, 60s and 70s. You've got to remember back then there weren't mindfulness classes. You know, we wouldn't go and do like a yoga class at the local sort of community center. He brought this stuff to the West. He brought these ideas out and made them very mainstream because of his incredible and articulate way of describing this stuff and making it relatable to everybody over in the West. Did a fabulous job of it. Obviously, mindfulness is seen as a remedy for the relentless stress and distraction of modern life. Watts, of course, with his deep understanding of Zen, was one of the first to introduce the Western world to this practice of being fully present. And his teachings encouraged a generation to pause, reflect, and engage deeply with the moment that they inhabit. So you can thank Alan Watts for those mindfulness classes that you've been going to. But of course, Watts' relevance extends far beyond mindfulness, particularly in today's digital age where social media will amplify feelings of inadequacy and disconnection. Watts' critique of the ego, the constructed self, is especially poignant He argued that this ego could be a source of significant distress as it separates us from the world and leads to a life driven by anxiety about status and achievement. Which brings me on to another significant aspect of his work, and that was his views on happiness and how we chase it, the dreaded hedonic treadmill. So what's famously said, the desire for more positive experience is itself a negative experience. And paradoxically, The acceptance of one's negative experience is itself a positive experience. It's one of his beautiful paradoxes. This idea, radical at the time, presaged current discussions around acceptance and commitment therapy, a popular method in psychology that echoes what's his philosophy of embracing life as it is, not as we wish it to be. On a more personal level, many find in Watts' teachings a guide for dealing with the pressures of modern life. Pressures to succeed, to conform, to outdo. He taught that life is not a journey with a serious purpose at the end, but a music to be danced to as we go along. This perspective, celebrating life as a process rather than a series of outcomes, offers a liberating shift for many struggling with the modern world's relentless pace and often unattainable goals. He also touched on the transformative potential of integrating play into our daily lives. There's a lot of stuff this guy is responsible for. In a society that very often prioritizes productivity over creativity, what's his emphasis on play as a form of expression and discovery is a refreshing reminder of the importance of creativity and innovation in personal and professional pursuits. His influence continues to permeate various facets of culture, from psychology and philosophy to art and pop. What's his ideas are featured in films, songs and books, showing that his work not only transcends time, but also disciplines. It's a huge testament to the enduring power of his techniques. As we draw to the close of today's episode, let's take a moment to reflect on the extraordinary journey of Alan Watts and the huge impact of his philosophies. From his early days as a curious young man in England to his later years as a philosophical luminary in California, Watts explored the depths of human consciousness and the mysteries of the universe with an unquenchable zest for life. Throughout this episode, we've travelled through the pivotal moments of Alan Watts' life, delved into the core of his philosophical beliefs and explored the remarkable relevance of his ideas in today's world. Watts' ability to combine Eastern and Western thought opened up new avenues of understanding about the self, the universe, and everything in between. His teachings, marked by an infectious blend of profound insight and playful paradox, encourage us to see the world through a lens of wonder and scepticism, urging us not to take life too seriously, yet inviting us to engage deeply with its mysteries. 
He taught us that life is not merely a series of random events, but a canvas of experiences that are deeply interconnected. His views on the interconnectedness of all life, the importance of the present moment, and the joy of participating fully in the dance of existence offer us wisdom, guidance that is perhaps more pertinent now than ever. In an age where anxiety and disconnection seem pervasive, what's his reminder to embrace the beauty of the present and to recognize our inherent unity with the universe can be seen as a beacon of hope. His philosophy provides a kind of spiritual toolkit for finding serenity and joy in a turbulent world, reminding us that happiness is not a destination to be reached, but a manner of travelling. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is all I have to say on the subject of the life and times of Alan Watts. But I could I could go on a lot, but I don't want to drown you too much in it. These are supposed to be bite size and... Uh, Keeping it under 30 minutes was a challenging one for this guy, but I hope you found it useful. So as we conclude, let's consider his approach to life's great questions, not as problems to be solved, but as mysteries to be lived. His teachings challenge us to rethink our perceptions of identity and reality, to dissolve the boundaries that separate us from the rest of existence, and to approach life with a sense of curiosity and adventure. I want to invite you, dear listener, dear listeners, to not just learn about Alan Watts, but to engage with his ideas. Go and listen to his talks, read his books, and experiment with integrating his teachings into your daily life. Observe how these perspectives might shift your view of your world, your relationships, and yourself. Remember, you are not a separate entity experiencing the universe. You are the universe experiencing itself through the lens of human consciousness. I want to thank all of you for listening to me today. My beautiful five subscribers, uh, hopefully it's not just my mum listening to this. Love you, mum. I hope that this episode has inspired you to go and investigate the wonderful work of Alan Watts, to think about your place in the universe and to dance along with existence instead of fighting against it. As always, if anything in this episode has resonated with you in any way, then I would love to hear from you. You can share your stories via Substack at theobservingeye.com or on social media. You can find us on YouTube at youtube.com forward slash at the observing eye and on TikTok and Instagram with the handle at the observing eye as well. Let us take forward Alan Watts' call to embrace life as a magnificent cosmic play where each of us, with our unique roles and scripts, contributes to the unfolding of something much greater than ourselves. As Watts himself would say, the only way to make sense out of change is to plunge into it, move with it, and join the dance. Take care, everybody. Much love, and I'll catch you soon. You've been listening to The Observing Eye. Thanks for spending some time with me today. I hope it's been useful. And if you're interested in any more of my writing or work around psychology, philosophy, and general day-to-day -day living, please go and take a look at my substack, which is theobservingeye.com. And that's I as in the letter, not I as in the gelatinous organ through which you see. Take care, everybody. Much love, and I'll catch you soon.